Let's talk about Hellraiser. I will give you my non-spoiler review of Hellraiser. So I'm not going to get too deep into the story. Uh, if you are familiar with previous incarnations, so to speak, of Hellraiser, this is consistent with those in terms of the simple rules uh, with maybe some variations. But uh, it begins with, of course, a mysterious box and a puzzle that is solved by someone who is brutally ripped apart limb from limb by a bunch of chains that appear out of nowhere. It, and then it becomes a search and a way to how do you connect with the Cenobites? How do you connect with these otherworldly beings in a way that doesn't lead to imminent death? Uh, a box is discovered by a young woman and her, her brother, her brother is... Uh, uh, injured in a way. I don't want to. I don't want to go too much, too much into it. But it effectively becomes. We're introduced to a group of people who are now in a mansion where they're confronted by the Cenobites. I'm, 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 I'm struggling with like what to say and what not to say. Suffice it to say that uh, people go head to head and don't always survive. I Miss mean, the whole thing. You introduce a bunch of characters like that. Some are not going to survive. Some are going to get horribly ripped apart. Some may or may not live or in some form or whatever. But uh, what I'll say is my memory of the original Hellraiser is that I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was very original, weird. I think it, uh, and they even make a joke about it in the first Hellraiser, like enough with this cat and mouse shit because it turns into kind of a cat and mouse thing and the second half of this movie effectively turns into cat and mouse it's an hour and 55 minutes probably should have been 90 minutes but what is there i actually really like it's set in serbia so it was clearly shot not in the united states and and that is i think for good reason um and it seems like some of the cast members also are not from the united states but uh I, I really like the look of the new Cenobites. People are complaining about, uh, uh, are people complaining about a female pinhead? I don't know if they are. I don't think you need to worry about it. I think that the new Cenobites are just as horrific and disgusting in many ways, um, especially using like some new, um, sort of a mix of digital and makeup effects. But I would say, at least from what I saw, probably more than 80%, maybe 90% all makeup effects with some digital enhancement is how it is. And I think that that was a smart choice. If you made everything too digital, it just would have ruined it. But I, I, I just, it sort of took me back to, cause I was a little, I gotta be honest. I was a little bored for the first half of the movie. Okay. It's like, all right. I get that there's drama with all these characters and they're all acting, you know, they act like how stupid people act in horror movies. And that's a little frustrating, right? Um, it's a little frustrating when you see the characters acting like, haven't you seen a horror movie? Do you realize what happens to people when they make bad choices? This is what's going to happen to you. But once it gets going, the second half of the film, I really enjoyed, including all of the Cenobites, including uh, the motivation. Um, if you can solve this puzzle, you're effectively, it's a way to talk to God, right? Almost like Raiders of the Lost Ark or uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark-like in that sense. But I had a good time with it. I was surprised. Um, I think that, you know, when a series like this gets like to a point of ridiculousness, you can kind of just write it, write it off, right? Like the Halloween films, I think a lot of people are kind of writing those off. I'm glad that Jamie Lee Curtis is back, okay? But this Hellraiser is, um, it's not the worst reboot I've seen. I think the second half of the movie really is the star. I think it would have benefited better from being 90 minutes rather than nearly two hours. Just speed that up. And uh, it is not for the faint of heart. The final, uh, I don't I, I don't know how much I can say. The, la the last part of the movie is fucking horrific. There are some, um, and I, Eric Weber um, at Awards Ace or Midnight Movie Talk he talked about like a couple of the deaths being kind of traumatic. Yeah, there are deaths that are traumatizing in terms of the level of gore, blood, blood and guts, and sort of this mix of like fetish wear and reskinned and 
guts just being sort of on display. It's, you know, the, the Cenobites are effectively like, you know, walking autopsies that dress to go to some fetish BDSM event, um, you know, from the mind of uh, Clive Barker. And uh, I actually really enjoyed the new Hellraiser. I wish I'd seen it in a the theater. I would say this, that uh, why is this movie not in a the theater? Uh, why was Prey not in a the theater? There have been some things we've seen on streaming that like, okay, you know, and Prey, I think, surprised people. This surprised me in the same way of I went into Prey thinking like, this is going to be terrible. This is going to be stupid. And actually, there are parts of it that really surprised me. And I feel the same way about Prey as I do about this new Hellraiser. It's like, oh, surprising. Uh, enjoyed and quite enjoyed the new Cenobites and the... It sounds like one of the, and I don't want to say because I've not done, I haven't looked any behind the scenes, I haven't looked on IMDb, but I get the feeling based on how one of the characters talks that one of the characters is trans. I'm talking when I say characters, I mean Cenobites. But it kind of it kind of works. It it works. So if you're a fan of the Hellraiser series, depending on how big of a super fan you are of the original Hellraiser, you know you you may or may may or not may or may not love this. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. So a mild recommendation for the new Hellraiser. And um, I watched it during the day. I shouldn't have done that. I should have watched it at night. So watch it at night. But there you go. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm not much of a horror guy. I mean, is this is this movie about... You're watching it for the horror, for the gore, for the... Or is there a story that's worth following? The story is always thin. It's curiosity killed the cat. Is I, I want to solve this puzzle. The puzzle leads to peril. The peril leads to how do I save my friends? It turns into a cat and mouse of being chased by Cenobites. And yeah. they do have certain weaknesses. They can't get through wrought iron doors. So if you're going to... I, I kind of... One of the... Like third, but also the, the goriness is, I mean, people being fit, like a full body is being ripped apart. Yeah. I mean, if you are squeamish, do not see the new Hellraiser, okay? But if you like blood and gore, you know, and I think as long as it's, it relates to the story. So I will accept it in this. It's and this not, is what the first one was, basically? The first or? one was similar. Yeah, the first okay. one was similar. I do wish, not that, you know, I wish they just explained themselves a little bit more. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. super familiar with the Hellraiser lore. I kind of fell off uh, the Hellraiser I saw the first one and the other, the other ones, I think, I don't, I don't recall if I saw all of them because um, this is back in the eighties, but um, you know, this was, I was pleasantly surprised in the same way I was surprised about prey. So look, if you're a super fan of Hellraiser, you're going to have nitpicks. I didn't have those nitpicks because I really liked the original and I thought, Oh, well, this is just a modern and there's not much different. It's, it's similar sort of, it hits a lot of the same beats as the original for the most part. I, I just think it was maybe a mm -hmm. little longish at the beginning, but once it gets going, uh, quite enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.